Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another really short comp tip Tuesday. This week we're talking about the dust grain, which is the best grain, the best grain that exists unequivocally, without a doubt, period, full stop. It is the best grain. You're never ever going to find a better grain note than this one. If you uh, have been comping for a while, you probably know this, uh, but for everyone else, you're going to love it. <laughs> It's going to be great. Dust grain is made by the Germans, I think. I mean, what a bunch of industrious folks. They make the best stuff. Um, so let's just go over a quick overview of how you could do this. Uh, yeah, yeah. How you could regrain and all that jazz. So we've got our, our little car here driving along. And let's say you want to paint, paint out the car for whatever reason. Want to get rid of it. There you go. Paint it out the car. Um, then, so you've degrained before that. Uh, generally, we use a reduced noise node by a neat video. Uh, that's the industry standard. It's much better, but uh, I don't have it here. So the old denoise will have to do. If I then minus the denoise from the plate, what you will see is the grain. But if you look closely, it's not just the grain that it takes away. It's also a bunch of detail that you actually really want to keep. So then it doesn't make sense to just re to just just put a new grain over the plate because guess what? If I look through the plate, you see that you also lost a bunch of sharpness and detail. I think it's probably better visible here. See here? You can see that it denoised too much. So this is why you always want to just, you always just want to um, minus it and plus it back on top. Now, there's a problem with this method and which is this. So if I do it on the painted area, if you look here, you can hear, you can see the car that used to be there is now sort of the grain and the detail that we denoised is now over it back on top. We don't want that, obviously. So then what you would do is then uh, get a mask of where you painted, which is this, and then just grain on top of the area that you painted. And the rest, you want to make sure uh, that you do minus and over. So you keep all the detail. So this is where the car used to be. And that would have, that's, that's fixed the problem. That's good. So we manually grained it, key mix it over with the mask. And that has fixed the problem. So that's all great, but guess what? Dust grain can do this all for you. You don't even have to, you don't even have to manually grain, which is a pain. Yeah, it's, you, you know, you know, it's, it's not the most fun, the most fun compositing work. So how dust grain works? Super simple. I don't understand why not everyone is using this, but every time I, I, I go work at a studio, I try to convince them, hey, uh check this shit out you know so same same uh same operation on this side of the tree just painting out the car and then what you do with the dust grain you connect the comp in to the comp the d grains to the denoise and the plate to the node above the denoise so just the plate um then there's a mask option which I generally do a difference from the the plate and the and the, you can do this at the bottom of the tree, but in this case it's just the the denoise. And after I paint it, different stats. You can see oh, this is where we need to redo our grain. And then you're in the dust grain node. Check it out. So what you do in the dust grain node is you just analyze it. You click the button analyze. What it does, it kind of normalizes the grain and it looks for the levels, uh, the luminance levels and how intense the grain is at, at which luminance. So it does that for you and then you get something like this after you click the analyze button, which you can adjust if it, if it isn't accurate, but generally it works pretty well. You don't have to touch it. If you don't, then go to the replace nodes and this is where the the uh the mask is going to be important click the replace mask 
and it's gonna select this and so if you then yeah if you activate this then it will just add the grain on the mask that makes sense right so everything else it just kind of gets minus and then over it uh, like we see in this tree so it does that all for you and then you click on scatter if i don't have the scatter activated which is uh let me see where that car is <laughs> that's where the car is if you don't have the scatter activated you can see these lines you still have that detail problem so then if you scatter it it kind of uses like a fancy shuffle method of how it displaces the grain with uh, like a like a cell pattern or whatever see and then it's gone and that's it and now all of your levels of all of the grain of your red blue and green of all of the luminances are automatically matched to the plate Oh, by the way, you also have to, when you replace it, you also have to select sort of a, an area with uh, no detail and just the grain, which is, in this case, it's the sky. So yeah, that's a whole mouthful, but uh, I think we got there. This is, without a doubt, the best, the best grain nodes. You can, I mean, you can match it, you can do it this way, but it's a lot more work. Don't use the regrain, by the way, the the F regrain or whatever. You can get this kind of weird, the, the sort of like plusy grain. It's super weird. I don't know why people use it. Use like an advanced grain or, a, or just a regular grain. This does it all for you. It's the best. It's going to save you a bunch of time, a bunch of headaches, and it it just always works. So thanks, Germans, and uh, see you next time.